Far from being a homogenous population, the estimated 30 to 35 million Kurds who live along the borders of Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Syria are actually a very large and diverse group of people. They share a common history, a common language, and a strong desire to establish a homeland. Mutlu C.V. Roglu is a journalist with VOA's Kurdish Language Service and an expert in Syrian and Kurdish affairs. He spoke with Plogdans Milar Sega about the Kurdish struggle for independence. So, uh, yes, they're not monolithic. They have uh, linguistic differences. They have uh, tribal differences. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, in each part of the, what Kurds call Kurdistan, the dynamics are different. The relation with the central government is different. But they have a common identity. They call themselves Kurds. They call their homeland Kurdistan. Because the, the circumstances in each part of Kurdistan is different. So the Kurds of Turkey dropped the demand for uh, independence around 15, 20 years ago. And Kurds of Syria, they never uh, wanted, they never sought an uh, independent Kurdistan. They want a decentralized Syria where Kurds and other ethnic and religious minorities can live uh, together. Like you say, they have Western values. They want to be part of the West. That's why uh, Kurds of Syria, for example, they chose U.S. over Russia. And that's what this disaster is happening to them, because Russia believes that Kurds need a lesson, because they chose the U.S. over them. Because, as you know, Ru Russia is a traditional ally of Bashar Assad, Syrian president. So, and uh, many Kurds believe it's uh, the green light from Putin as well caused Erdogan to attack Kurds, because he, feel, he feels uh, the more Kurds of Syria get power, they get status, uh, the Kurds in Turkey will demand similar things. So Kurds, in a way, paying the price of being pro-Western. Are you surprised that that we that Kurds are not receiving more international support towards uh, building their own their own country, their own independent country in a land that is in desperate need of democratic principles? I'm certainly disappointed. I'm certainly uh, believe Kurds deserve more because it's in the benefit of the West too. Uh, to support uh, people that share their values, people that uh, treat different ethnic and religious groups not as a threat, but as a, a richness. Uh, but when you look to the support for the Kurds, it's very minimal. I, I wonder what your thoughts were when you heard the president uh, comparing uh, what was going on there um, in Syria to kids in a playground uh, fighting for their toys. Uh, as a journalist, as an American, I, found, I took it very hard, honestly, because we're talking about the lives of people. This is not in a, a game for kids. It's pe we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. People are forced to leave and looting, killing, execution, and the streets are full of uh, bodies. This is what's going on now. So, so you're suggesting that the U.S. Uh, administration's decision to pull its troops out of Syria uh, is already backfiring? Certainly. It's already backfiring, and I'm afraid it's going to get worse. Uh, first of all, for the people of the region, because they are displaced now. You cannot solve a refugee problem by making, creating new refugees, by expelling people from their homes, by making them you know, miserable, by, by causing their death. This is not a solution. Uh, with all due respect, President Trump uh, promises to end wars, but it's not going to end wars. This is going to make it even longer and longer. And also, the credibility of the U.S. Is at stake? Is strong, certainly at stake. So Kurds have st stood with the U.S. They, they lost a lot of their brave men and women. Now the U.S. is abandoning them. We had a report at VOA a few days ago. South Koreans are starting to worry. Our allies are starting to worry that are we going to be the next, you know, U.S cannot afford abandoning their allies. Look, every crisis presents an opportunity. The fact of the matter is people are talking about the Kurdish situation today. Uh, do you see perhaps uh, some light at the end of the tunnel here that perhaps the world will be talking about the plight of Kurds as a result of what we're seeing today? Uh, I like to be optimistic. I am always an optimistic individual. Uh, as At the moment, but there are my relatives, you know, their life is at stake because I have immediate relatives there. I have hundreds of friends calling me every day. It's personal. Ask, it's, yeah, it's personal to asking a glimpse of hope.
that Mr. President is going to change, is going to realize that uh, maybe he was a good intention, but the outcome is different. What do you want our audience to know about the Kurdish situation? I want uh, them to know that, yes, they, have, they, they share similar values, like, you know, our audience. They want, they embrace diversity. They embrace, they, dis, they respect the people's, uh, you know, identity, people's faith, people's religion. If the world is secure today, it's thanks to Kurdish men and women, you know. And my hope is that, is that they're going to remember this and they're not going to let, uh, especially Kurds in Syria, uh, to be killed or to be, you know, massacred, displaced. Uh, and because they caused the hope when the world was most gloomy, most pessimistic uh, from ISIS, it was the little Kurdish town Kobani uh, became the hope. And they de defeated, that was for you, for me, for everybody that defeat. They, prized, they paid the price for all of us. And it is time for people to stand with Kurds.